I am unashamed. What about you? So, um, welcome back to Unashamed. I am uh, Jace. I'm in Lake Eufaula, Oklahoma, which uh, I'd never heard of before. But it's a beautiful lake up here, and it's it's huge. I mean, we hit this lake probably a lot of ducks hit that thing. Oh yeah, there's there's been ducks waking right behind my cabin every morning. Uh, there's about a hundred Canadian. Did you see geese. any blue wing? You see any blue wing teal? No, just some mallards is all I've seen. There's there's a few mallards here, but I hadn't seen any small ducks. But yeah, it's a beautiful. It's like yep. it's it's low, low though. There must be a drought because this thing looks like it's down probably four feet lower than it normally is, maybe more. Eric Bouget got got a got in touch with us and said there's a big mass of teal coming towards y'all coming out of and he's up in the upper end of the little big horn whatever he's way up there little big horn whatever where's that montana well, he's up in uh montana so he said uh, he said they're coming towards you by the hundreds this morning within four days of him telling me that is when me and old Jay says smoked them blue wings. He he was he, he he alerted us and he was right. I so told him that. He's your early hmm. scout, your early warning scout. He's our plant. He's a plant up in the northern part of the United States. When he sees the blue wings, <laughs> he alerts us. We get ready for him, and then we but we four burn. Four days him. is a long time. It's first I've heard this story. This gets into the definition of near. They're <laughs> teal coming towards you. Four days later, they're here. that's a long time. <laughs> well, that's, they, hey, Montana, I don't know how fast the teal flies, right around 70 miles an hour, but straight through. But he's on a different well, flyway. They must have made a pit stop. The point you. was he's on the central flyway, Pacific flyway, the one that's over there, way over there. But it was just a sign that there are, one, a good crop of them, yeah. and they're all headed south. But it was amazing that within four days of that report, they loaded us up. Yeah, I don't know how to how to, how to wrap my head around that. I mean, because most times in life, you don't have four days to stop everything and wait. But it's interesting. It was a little alert. I was I was surprised that four days after he gave me that report, yeah. here they come. How long would it take a teal to fly from North Dakota to Louisiana? Well, if he just took off. Unlike an airplane curving around, if you just went pretty well straight ahead, 70 miles an hour from here to Montana, what do you say? Mm, I mean, if you were driving it on a vehicle, probably 12 hours, 10 or 12 hours. But you take birds flying through the air, they can get there a lot quicker than, than vehicles riding on the pavement. So you replaced the old saying that of as a as a crow flies, it's as a teal flies. It's about 75 That's miles right. an hour. Yeah, straight shot. Yep. Well, you'd have to yep. figure out how many miles it it is from Louisiana to North Dakota. Somebody uh, not figure, the Dakotas. Somebody figure further, that out. Further west than that. He's in Montana. No, but I was just drawing a oh, line yeah. over. If they move, they I all I told him most together. of ours comes out of the Dakotas, North and yeah. South Dakota, straight shot down. It wouldn't take them two or three days. Well, how many miles is it from North Dakota to Louisiana? I I'd say seven, eight hundred miles. Oh no, more I than that. Just working on this. Maybe a it, thousand. It'd be a thousand. Wow. I would. I would bet. That's that's all the way to the top. So if it's a thousand miles, do we got how many miles? Traveling at seventy <laughs> miles an hour. Oh boy, here's one of these word problems. I was never good at these. Uh, it looks like it is, it would take 23 hours. Oh, it's 1,525 miles. Ooh. So if they were flying 70 miles an hour, so somebody needs to divide 1,500 <laughs> miles by 70 miles an hour. You have our crack staff there, Jay. So they're working on the 22 bottom? hours for them to get here. If they if they flew in a straight line. I saw them four days later and nights. So four days and four nights is when I, we started seeing them. That's when they just, here they are. So they had to make some pit stops along the way. Make a few pit stops. Because they could have made it in 22 They could fly half the night. Now, we've seen them. We they made a pit. Well, they got to sleep. Well, you hear them come over. It's just, 
before daylight, you yeah. say, boy, they... They seemed well-rested to me. Yeah. By the way, for, for ducks to be able to do that, they would have to have some kind of uh, hardware hardwired into their brain, some kind of GPS system, because they end up, most of them, at the Yucatan across the Gulf of Mexico. So they have to have some kind of wiring in their head that the Almighty put in there, and the, and the mankind had nothing to do with it. These birds, they know where they're going almost, but a lot of them, they've never been to the Yucatan. They're fresh hatched out of the egg. As soon as they can fly, they look around, and they're whoever their mother says, load up, we're heading to the Yucatan. What do you attribute that to? Huh? I attribute that to Jesus being the creator, creator of all things, the cosmos and you. And me. I'll agree with that assessment. So it was it's it's hardwired into it. And a blue winged teal, a blue winged teal, you say, Who wh- 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 where'd that come from? Somebody made him. Or, <laughs> or we wouldn't have him. They said, Oh no, I'd come out of salt water. I'm like, salt water. <laughs> no. <laughs> what'd you say what'd you say, Dad? The the mom tells him to load up. <laughs> load up. We're heading <laughs> we're heading to Mexico. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So and about March, <laughs> we'll be looking out. They'll go back. The same group, they come back through here. They go down on the carbohydrates when they stop to eat. They go down on the carbohydrates. What do you mean by Gra- carbohydrates? Grass seeds, corn, beans, rice. They, that's what they go down. That's They come back through the woods for their nesting uh Food supplies, little bitty critters, little bitty crawfish, protein, like that. Protein. protein, 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 protein. They carbohydrates work on the way down, protein on the way back. And they're working out. They're working off the carbohydrates on the way they back. They all gather back protein. up, up in Pato country, in the Dakotas, Montana, going across the upper tier states, the Canadian prairies, and we're all sitting down there waiting for them. I cooked one batch of them just to see if they were good. And I made one big gumbo, and everybody that got into the gumbo, they said, what kind of, what what you put in that? I said, blue wing teal, because they used to have kind of a wang to them, kind of a smell about them that was not good. But these, nope, they were fat, and they didn't stink. So they made a good, great gumbo. I say it fed about 10 to 15 individuals. Well, that's pretty well a rule of life. If the food that you're preparing stinks before you prepare it, it's probably not going to be good. That's why when I take out a gallon of milk and I pop the lid, the first thing I do is put the smell test to it. I know it, but the smell test, which is beyond me now, I've lost my sense. You could take a dump right there. (laughs) And the wind blowing from the dump to me, and I couldn't smell it. It has its, it had its, it's, it's a good idea. I mean, it's a good thing. You say, but boy, no, what are you doing idea, since you lost though. your smell? I said, a lot of people are saying, woo, it's not what is that thing. I'm smelling? I'm like, hey, yeah. it beats me because I can't smell it, whatever it was. I have got no, them little old dogs down there, you know. Kay got a couple of little. I have no comment on that, Phil. That was a mic drop moment. <laughs> The conversation <laughs> ended right there. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming. Losing your smell is not the end of the world. Is what I'm saying. There has advantages yeah. to it. One of them is sometimes in life stinks. the illustration is so graphic that I do forget the point. I forget yeah. what the whole thing was all about, and that was one of those moments. <laughs> but, but Phil has a knack for simplifying. He, he does that. One and of the, the guy- things that will leave you, Jace. How old are you? I'm in my 70s. How old are you? I'm over 50. You're over 50s. One one of these days, you're going to look up and you say, good night. My old dad told me that I'd lose my smell. I've lost my smell. I don't well, know that you it's don't a want that prostate gland. Your prostate gland to get to the flaring up. They'll tie you down to a bed. Oh, no. And they'll put drips in you. I'm nervous. Anti- right antibiotics. Now. The only thing that'll kill that. We got to go in there, Mister Robinson, and give you some of these antibiotics. I said, oh, I don't like that, but they did it anyway. I come out of there. I couldn't smell your mm. crap anymore. It took my <laughs> smell away. 
<laughs> so I'm living with it. Uh, well, I'm just not sure I've lost my appetite in Boy, the that's, last five minutes. Man, that stinks right there. I said, not to me, it doesn't. <laughs> Only a dad so can see that as an advantage. I, I, <laughs> That you, you would lose don't your smell st- anymore. They don't stink anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't well smell that's them. true. But then you, you also miss some of the the beauties of life and being able to smell things. Dad, I'm not sure it's a universal truth that every well, all taste. old people lose their I, smell. I, <laughs> some people smell right yeah, up to the I don't the know end. if that's. Uh, I just thought. Well, I guess it gets coming with old age or something. You know. Yeah. But my smell gone, but my taste is still there. Since you were in the hospital that time, you haven't been able to smell since then. That's yeah. that you linked it back. Haven't been to able there. to smell since then. Maybe you need to see a medical professional and see where where all that started. I don't think that's well. A I tell you what thing. it was. They said you you got a prostate that's really infected, and the only thing that'll get it is the most powerful antibiotic on planet Earth. But it got your smell as a as a. It robbed me of my smell. Their fault, but I don't hold against them. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't file suit against them. <clears throat> The good news what? is, all our listeners, I'm never going to sue you. I don't care what you do. I'm not going to sue you. <laughs> You're not. He's well, we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't sue people. I and if we ever just, move on. If we ever decide to use the bathroom anywhere near that, there's no problem there either. So it feels like I can go to the bathroom fine now, but I can't smell. So actually, I it's consider kinda... that two positives. Yeah. So. Okay, now let me tell you about my weekend because we, I don't know, I've, I've lost my appetite during all that. I actually went frog hunting. I think the last podcast here, I was going to do something that I've never done before. I had actually attempted to catch frogs in October, but was never successful. So for the first time in my life, I caught frogs in October. But you did ask me about it. You figured I, I asked you because I thought. What did, what did I say? You said, I think you're going to catch them. Now, I didn't catch many. Uh, I, I wound up, what I did was I asked one of my buddies to go as a plan B, because once I went on the venture, I said I needed at least 12. So I actually challenged this fella. I said, I will give you a crisp $100 bill if you come up with five frogs. Because frog hunting is an adventure, and and it is. You get, oh, yeah, I mean, and he said, are you serious? I said, yeah. Sometimes money is a motivation. Well, it's a challenge, you know. Motivator. So so we went, and my party, it started off great. We caught four pretty quickly, and then the motor literally blew up. There, There was a sound. You know how when a, an engine backfires? Yep. This was a backfire that was the end of the frog hunt. It, it was a kaboom. We all jumped, thought the boat. I was going to ask you what piece of equipment you were going to use. We were at, we had a mud motor, and, and he hadn't used it since duck season of last year, but he had a mechanic come down who was in the boat with us, Cause he said, I'm not too sure about this rig and he thought he had it working, but it backfired and, and that, that was it. Now the mechanic spent the rest of the time as we're paddling back and push pulling back, which we caught another frog without the use of the motor. So we had five, which I thought, well, that's enough for me. What size but, are these frogs running? Oh, they Mid-size were. Mid-size or big frogs? They were big frogs. I mean, we had one big frog and then i'd say four pretty big they were all big mm-hmm. hang on jace let's, let's take a break so dad you taught us a lot of good things about the outdoors uh through our years of growing up which i appreciate now because i'm trying to teach them to my kids and grandkids one of the best things you told us about heat is find some shade and uh and have a place where you can find some and uh, I've never forgotten that. It's one of the reasons why that I love one of our sponsors, which is called Fast Growing Trees, uh, because they help you have some shade in your backyard and your front yard. Uh, they curate thousands of plants so you can find the perfect fit uh, for your specific climate or location for your needs. You don't have to drive around to nurseries, which I've spent time doing before, big gardening centers, and you got to fight all the crowds and all that. 
Uh, they make it super easy. The plants are shipped to your door in one to two days. Whether you want to add some privacy, some shade, or some natural beauty uh, to your yard. So why don't you check them out? Lisa and I have used these guys. We love them. Uh, the, the plants came. They were in great shape when they got there. Instructions on how to plant them, which helps people that are not green thumbers. Uh, so over a million happy, fast-growing trees customers around the country. They've got a 30-day alive and thrive guarantee, which is means which means you can trust everything that they send. You'll be healthy for years to come. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash Robertson. You'll get 15% off your entire order now through October 31st. 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash Robertson. Check them out. So I forgot all about my buddy. And so at about 10 o'clock that night, he sent me a text saying he had two. He said, look like I have $40 worth of frogs. And I was like, no. The deal is, this is not per frog. $100 for five frogs. So I forget about that thinking this, this hunt's over. So about 1130, now I'm back home. He sends me a video and I thought, well, he come up with the five frogs. No, he, they go up under some limbs. It, it, they see a frog way back in there, which would have been their number three frog. And when they push pole back, there was as big a cotton mouth as you've ever seen in their boat. So they go up under some limbs. Of course, these people that says, you know, cotton mouths can't climb trees, never look up. That There's a rule about that. Wrong. I've had cotton mouths I saw in my boat about daylight, and I've jumped out of the boat into the bayou because there was a cotton mouth like that. He opened that mouth up when I was walking toward my outboard. Well, he just started coming at me. Well, I jumped out in the river. I just jumped out, but when I did, I looked up on the edge of the boat. He was coming out of the boat into the bayou. Now I've said, I got to get back in the boat because he's yeah. coming out of the boat and I'm out here where he's, so I get back up in there. My neighbor, she was an old woman at the time. She was drinking coffee watching this and boy, did she let out a howl about, about laughing. She, she, oh, she laughed? She said, I would have paid money to show somebody what happened. She said, did you get him? Well, that was said, what no, was... I didn't get him. I said, but I, I said, I got back in the boat when he got, in the, got out of the boat. That was what was disturbing about this because they film, you know, they so they have to kill the cut. He's striking up. And, yeah. But, but it's like we're in a society now where something dangerous happens. You know, Cottonmouth, you're a million miles away from a hospital. And I don't mean literally, but by the time you get the boat back and yeah. launched, I mean, the time that's going to that's gonna pass by. They'll make probably- you, if they're in the boat and you all of a sudden see them, you'll, you'll get out of the boat, give but it to them. My but- point is somebody starts filming it <laughs> instead of aiding in the yeah. <laughs> in doing something about the problem either. Kill the danger the of at hand. So they kill the snake with the uh, push pole. And so I'm like, that's not going to get you a hundred dollars. I mean, I, I I was like, why are you sending me this? Oh yeah. I mean, it was exciting. Great. We he, paid he, near death experience. Oh, He was like, well, that was his point. We're risking our lives here now for this hundred dollars. Your answer to- was where are, show me the frogs. So I, I say these boys, you know, it's not going to happen. And I'm going to eat the five frogs, and I'm not going to have any guest, which is what this had developed into. So I go in, go to bed. Well, well after midnight, I never looked at the clock, but the dogs rang out. You know, I got the same system you got. The alarm system is two little dogs. Yep. And so I thought, that's Dogs a, bark, that's grab, somebody, grab your weapon. Yep, I, that's what happened. So I, I got my pistol. I said, that's somebody is in the yard. And uh, so I look out there. It's, you know, we're, we're in the wee hours of the morning. And, and there's my buddy. Oh, y'all know him. Oh, Chad Johnson. Uh, look, I stuck my head out. He said, hey, we're not the B team. I got you five frogs. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Joker's done hunted all night long <laughs> to come up with five frogs. I said, well, I just wanted to see if you'd do it. Here's I'll, You take your woman out on a nice supper on me. Here's your hundo. And so I got my 10 bullfrogs. So I thought y'all would think that was an interesting way to get 10 I'm frogs like old, I'm in like October. I'm not that old Indian chief, Jace. Good trade. Good <laughs> trade. <laughs> So you had 10 frogs. So did you invite anybody over? You still just ate them by yourself. You were missing. Oh, yeah. No, it was a family outing. You know, I had families and closest friends. I mean, at first I thought about just gorging myself on the 10 frogs. But you know what the Bible teaches? You love your neighbor. And uh, so Missy and friends got in on it. And, and we really enjoyed that. It was a good trip. practice of hospitality. It's biblical. It is. And look, I, you know, this guy that, that I gave the $100 to, I mean, it's not like he's got a lot of money. I mean, he appreciated it. And it was more about the challenge, you know. So I thought it was a fun venture. So you can catch frogs in October, but there's not a whole, I think some of them had gone in. And it was kind of cool. I mean, it was probably the coolest I've ever hunted frogs. I would say Johnson took his, he took his ministry, because we, we all, all three of us, spent a lot of time mentoring him as a young, young Christian. And so he took that, our, um, use of the outdoors to help ministry and help minister other people. He took that to the full extent because he's worked that into his whole ministry. He helps a lot of drug addicts and people, but he, he does it by getting them out in the boat or getting them out on a frog hunt or whatever. Cause dad, you always told us that there was not much trouble in a boat but there was a lot of trouble in town. That's what you used to tell us. And and I think he took that to heart. So now he's one of our ministry leaders at our church, which is pretty amazing. So Jace, that was, that was a good ministry. You you were donating to the ministry. Yeah, that's what I thought. So that was the backstory on that. But look, we had a long weekend after the frog hunt. We, uh, you know, we had our Mia Moo annual event and we wound up Explain with. Explain that to the listeners that might not know what you. Yeah, we had. We had 78 volunteers, and we had 30 families that we have helped through the Miamu Fund show up. Now, we invited, I think we've helped 185 families in some way, I think almost 150 financially. And they all get invited, but you got to remember, these are kids with special needs and families with special needs so it's hard to get everyone there and usually every year we'll have around 30 families show up pretty well it's facial aberrations you could say just uh, well it's craniofacial issues and uh but most of these kids have a secondary issue and it may be some sort of disease i notice we do a uh the parents get together for a couple of hours uh while while we're out at camp which we all are familiar with but one of the sessions and i think it's the parents favorite session is that we we just have a share time about where we're at and but i just noticed because it's fresh on my mind that most of these kids have more problems than just the craniofacial issue and you got to remember these kids that we're helping this is not uh this is at least an 18 year journey roughly 18 years because there's multiple surgeries as you grow because as you grow since you started off with you know a lack of tissue where your palate is or your nasal cavities your jaw doesn't grow right it there's it's a managed situation so this is a this is pretty well a life of misery and and pain and suffering that it's being managed, and uh, we had, we had a real special time this time, because <clears throat> uh, that's a lot of volunteers. But you think about having that many volunteers, who because this this thing is pretty well a, a an entire weekend, and uh, we pay all the expenses of the families to come down. I think it was probably a hundred and thirty people with the fa- with the thirty families, and uh, they do a night together. On Friday night, well, on Friday night, we have the volunteers over. And I had Gimber, he cooked jambalaya. And uh, and it's basically just because all the volunteers don't necessarily know each other. So we have a coming together. You get to know everybody who's really just doing this because they love the Lord. 
and uh and we get to know everybody and then saturday is a long day it's like seven to seven out at camp and there's very various activities for the kids most of it's fun for the kids but we have moments uh the theme this year was from first peter 2 that they're loved they're chosen and they're treasured we had a little treasure theme to it which was uh was was awesome and so uh we did that we had a special time this time because we had a doctor there uh it was actually one of mia's surgeons and a speech therapist there and so they now look for them to take time for a whole weekend and come out and just be there for questions and answers i mean was really especially uh, doctors they're busy people yeah and uh so and and i could tell they were impressed because we're you know we just don't help them financially we're having these families spiritually and emotionally and and Mia puts together the whole thing. She's she's in charge of it. She does a fantastic job. What I found fascinating and is Mia's had how many? She's had like fourteen major surgeries and uh, multiple procedures. Hang on, hang on before you do tell the rest of that. Let's take another break. One of our sponsors that we really appreciate uh, is a group called Covenant Eyes. And uh, they've been around for about 22 years. And uh, I first became aware of them years ago whenever I would go to Promise Keepers events because that's kind of when they were just coming out. And uh, they've helped over 1.5 million people uh, have a porn-free life, which is really, really important. Uh, we know the the power of lust, what it means. Uh, and, of course, it's, it's men or women, uh, but it's been a real plague for men. Uh, the Bible tells us a lot about it. Jesus says, you know, what you look at determines what's in your heart. And so we don't want to be looking at things that are going to damage our heart uh, or our families. And so uh, we want you to really, you know, be praying about, you know, getting this out of your life. And this is a group that can help you do that. So here's what you can do. You can, they have a, a free 30 day trial that you can check them out and, and see if they can help you. And they will. Uh, and that's if you go to coveyes, C-O-V-E-Y-E-S dot com. So it's coveyes dot com. Free 40-day trial. You're going to use the promo code Phil uh, when you check out. You have nothing to lose but a lot to gain uh, by getting pornography out of your life. So check them out, uh, coveyes dot com slash Phil. Use the promo code Phil. And so uh, what I found fascinating is, you know, she's she's fresh into college now for a couple months, but she brought with her eight new friends from her college who volunteered. Yeah, and, uh, I was run off from the, the premises, and Miss Kay said, we've got about eight or ten people coming here, and I'm going to show them how to cook chicken and dumplings. And, uh, you know, college kids these days, they never heard of dumpling. But uh, so Miss Kay, she said, you need to hit the road, find you some place to hang out for a few hours. So I went over here to old Dan, the man, and uh, we was watching Matt Dillon while the dumpling cooking was going on. Well, the kids, they said, well, we want to go over there and see the gray beard. So Tell me about Mia's friends. Mia's friends. Yeah, I knew she took them. So they loaded they up. brought them down here. And a little knock on the door, you know, so here they all come, a little picture-taking, picture-taking event. So we just did it, you know, to, but they thought it was the greatest thing ever. They made the dumplings, chicken dumplings, and then they then they ate them. Well, that should be a prerequisite for college kids because they don't offer that at universities, how to make chicken and dumplings. That's what I was thinking. But, you know, you think about learn- I never heard I never heard the word eight years of college. I never heard anybody talk anything about a dumpling. It no. just, just wasn't there. No Jesus and no dumplings. So add it up. <laughs> There's another T-shirt. No Jesus. You've now no discover the why, why, problems how the, how the of things went society. to hell. To all the education system. No <laughs> Jesus and no dumplings. It's it's doomed to fail. So think about it, Dad. How much how much better would a college course you would get out of it if you had a semester of cooking with Miss K versus oh. gender versus gender oh, studies. Better. <laughs> Practicing hospitality. They don't go get into that much in college anymore. But you gotta to remember too, uh, you know, of course we're gonna we're gonna be Jesus based and uh we all come together to help these kids and there's a lot of sacrifice and uh for people, you know, giving up their weekend just to, you know, 
give some some family some hope and but we also you know us you know missy and i we're not you know we're not ball peen hammer of of from uh you know preachy but we can't help people without the holy spirit being involved and being jesus focused because that's just who we are and so we tell them that we say look we realize some of these families may not be believers and uh that's not a box you have to check to be a part of this I yep. said, but we're this is what we think and so we share our faith during the weekend and look there's a lot of questions that come up i mean it was interesting with some of these college uh group that came with mia because they were like well we're we're having some interesting conversations about why bad things happen to good people and uh why do you think jesus was more than a prophet and and basically questions that you get you know from the world that uh, of questioning whether this is whether this is true, whether Jesus is true, and how do you know the Bible is accurate and all these kind of questions, which makes for great conversations. But what we do offer, and I wonder, I set all this up to say, because it was a great day, and uh, I mean, it's exhausting, but it's great. And some of the activities we do, we fish, and there's, uh, I think this, uh, my buddy Murray showed them how to, had a metal detect and treasure hunt. They shoot bows and arrows, and we play basketball. And I mean, it, there's, and they play cards. And you think, well, why, why is there playing cards? Because a lot of these kids spend a lot of time in hospitals and in recovery. And they're all, I mean, cards is a big thing because you just think about how many times they played a card game or a board game. So, but then we offer an invitation uh, for Sunday, and we, we did this last year, and we decided to offer it again because they we all put them up in a hotel, and the hotel, the manager of the hotel is a believer, and uh, we offered them to come and have a poolside service on Sunday morning, and they're all invited. They don't have to come if they don't want to, and uh, but it's there, and so and the hotel manager allows us to do that, and so Miss Kay came yesterday, and yep. I think every family but one, and the only reason they weren't there is because they had driven 28 hours to be here, so they, they left earlier. But all all the families came, and I would say about half of the volunteers, and Miss Kay was there. And so we did a poolside uh, service, and so Mia and some of her friends did the worship, and I spoke. I, I basically introduce jesus i thought we could go over my lesson what i did and see what y'all think and uh and missy was supposed to wrap it up but she gave about a five minute sermon after i was done <laughs> i saw the look in her eye <laughs> i thought no she's fixed it she was inspired it's a real uh i think it's a beautiful moment when you're at a you know a setting that's not religious i mean we're at a hotel we've gone through this long weekend it was a simple message on where we put put our faith and i thought y'all would find it interesting on how i did the 10 minute lesson and i wanted to get y'all's comments on it if if y'all are up for that yeah we are hang on let's take a break then go So what I did, I asked a question right off the bat. Uh, I said, what, what does the world say? What is the world's definition of success? Now, you can imagine what they said. Uh, I mean, if I asked y'all, how does the world define success? They did this, that, and the other, and made a billion dollars. in the Money. That money. that was the first answer. Money, how much money you got? It. Fame, 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 yep. Looks, uh, power, was, was another. Yep, looks, beauty. So, uh, and then I asked. So I asked two questions to start off. I thought, what is the, uh, what is the secret to being godly? Now I was surprised at the answers because there were three or four answers, and they all focused on Jesus, which was was going to be my point, you know, <laughs> but they, the answers that were spoken 
So what I did What's was that verse, Jace. Well, I, godliness me, with contentment is great gain. Yeah, I didn't read that, but here's what I did. I read Colossians one twenty seven. If I can find Colossians one twenty seven, it's it's. Is this still a part of your Bible? Bible? It's been. You know, it's missing right now. <laughs> Do you have Colossians one twenty seven? Yeah, I've got it. Pitiful. Yeah. No, here it is. I got it. I found it. I found it. Look. God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles you, the glorious riches of his, this okay. mercy. Yeah, the, mystery. of this mystery. The glorious riches. See that? He, he, God, you remember when Paul said, God chose to make known among us, people, you know, the Gentiles, the glorious riches of this mystery. This mystery, you know, in verse 26, that had been kept hidden for ages, but now been disclosed to believers. And it says the mystery is Christ, Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. So I read that, and then I read 2 Corinthians 4, and this was my main text, 2 Corinthians 4. And I didn't, like, quote it. I mean, I, I read the whole paragraph. 2 Corinthians 4, 5, which says, For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as, as Lord. Now that, and I made a little mention that this is the opposite of fame. Most people who are pursuing fame and the world's success, well, they what do they do? They preach themselves. But we don't preach ourselves. But Jesus Christ is Lord and ourselves as servants or surrendered for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. In verse 7, but we have this treasure, which was kind of our theme for the weekend, in jars of clay, to show that this all-surpassing power, and there's the other definition of worldly success, power. So we got power, treasure, fame, glorious riches, that this power is from God and not from us. Verse 8, we are hard-pressed on every side. Now look, and I'll just tell you all the backstory. The reason I read this next verse is because look at these families. You're talking about going through tough times and going through a lot of, years of misery frustration and pain when you read eight and nine just think about their perspective they're hard pressed on every side but they're not crushed they're perplexed or confused or you know wondering what to do but not in despair they're persecuted but not abandoned they're struck down but not destroyed and so I thought about, I, I thought that fit those families because in their mind, here they are, they have hard times on every side. It's very perplexing and confusing and filled with anxiety. Uh, they're persecuted because even some people believe, you know, they're at fault for the, like somehow or another God is not showing them favor and their kids are persecuted because they look different. And so you have all these moments that happen. And look, and when I thought about the struck down, I mean, there's a lot of times in this journey, cause I, you know, we had a daughter where you're literally on your knees thinking, please Lord. I mean, it, it's just a tough venture. And so, but then verse 10 says, and of course I made a point though, even though we go through all this, we're still here and we're together. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed. So I read that and I said, look, I know some of y'all are, are new to faith and some of you may not even believe. I said, but for us, I'm just not sure how you can bounce back or have something to grab a hold of without, without Jesus. I said, because when you say, why Jesus? And so then I went and focused on the, where it says, let light shine out of darkness. I said, to us, Jesus is the light switch of, of where things make sense. Because, and I went through the gospel. I, you know, he came here, he lived an innocent life. Uh, he died on a cross so that 
we can start over, have redemption. And he was buried and he came back from the dead to show us that we can live again. And this is bigger than, than this life. So I made a comment that there's two things that Jesus provides. You can always start over. Just think about that. You can always start over. And he introduced eternity. You can live forever. Well, if you just have those two things, you're good. So then I uh, gave a recipe for what God viewed as success. I mean, being hard-pressed, being perplexed, being persecuted, and being struck down, which you would never think are ingredients to a successful life, is actually was God's recipe for success because his power works in that to show that it's from him and not, not in us. So that was the first, the introduction of it. What do you think about that? What I think is it's a good way to bring up what Paul told Timothy. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And here's the, 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 the brutality of it and just the way it is. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it, which, which is really true. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. And he goes on about, we talked about fame and, and fortune. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge me and into ruin and destruction. The love of money is the root of all kind of evil. So the bottom line is you brought nothing in, you're taking nothing out Why you're here. If you just have food and clothing, Jace, just the bare minimum, it's enough. Yeah. You can you can survive with it. Whether you have an ailment or not. Just yeah. just say this is the way it is. God made me. Uh one day I will be I'll live forever. It's worth it. Yeah. Hang on, Jace. Let's uh, let's take our last break. Yeah, I think, Jay's. I think that's an excellent intro. And, and the main reason I do is because I think, you know, Paul was writing in a certain situation in 2 Corinthians, but what you, the folks you were talking to, and even what you guys have gone through, I think is one of the most difficult trials that any family could ever go through because it's your kids, it's your children that are suffering. It's a tough one. And it's one thing if I'm suffering, but when my kids or grandkids are suffering, it has a triple emotional effect on me. And so I, I, I just, I think that's excellent, Jace, because it's, I mean, what, what a, what a encouragement, you know, to them for, you know, what they're going through. Well, what we did was, and what you got to remember, I'll give you insight to where we're helping these families. The first few years up until puberty, it's basically all physical and the kids handle it with, style and grace i mean they they handle it better than the parents and uh and, and people you know when when you're a kid that you know the, our our families are trying to make them feel like superstars you know for enduring all this but once they get to 11 12 13 then all of a sudden these lures of the world all of a sudden they realize they look different they're not being applauded for all this. The physical flaws become yeah in, in their and mind. Center, front and center in their mind. Yeah, and they're persecuted, and so then it becomes a spiritual and emotional thing for the kid, and and uh, which is actually more difficult to address. Which is why a lot of the you know those parents come because some of them are teenagers that you know that we're helping, and they're just like, and look, we went through it with our with our daughter it they've been in all this trauma and it's very difficult for them to own this and accept it that this is this is just the way it is and so uh so we got in we got into that on the spiritual side and we we introduced jesus and i said well, why jesus and i read the colossians one now I backed up and read Colossians one. He is the image of the invisible God. Let's see if I can find Colossians one here. Yeah. For by him all things were created, things in heaven 
and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, all things were created by him, for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He's the head of the church. He's the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that he might be supreme. And then I read that about he's reconciling him to himself all things. God is, you know, through Jesus by making yeah, peace. I'm going to preach that this Sunday, that yeah. text. So then I got into 21, and it says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now Christ is reconciled. So I got into that darkness in life, and we make decisions, and that's why the cross means something. Because, look, these kids, they, they become teenagers, and they— they already have this this condition they got to deal with, and now the evil one, like it does with everybody, uses everything and anything to get us off the right path. And so we, as parents, come in there, and I'm like, if you don't have Jesus as an as an answer, it's going to be very difficult. Because I'm like, look at what he brings. So then I gave an overview of Mark where we're at. I was like, just think about what Mark Mark wrote about Jesus when he introduced Jesus. And I started with that first statement that Jesus said, the time has come, you know, repent and believe the good news. So then I define uh, repentance from Acts 26, 18, that it's a, it's an eye opening because Paul, when sharing his conversion, he said, I pray, or Jesus, when he was quoting Jesus, that he would open his eyes, turn from the power of darkness to light and the power of the evil one to God. You remember that phrase in acts 26 yep. so it's a it's a because of who jesus is in god's plan you have this turn in in direction and attitude and where you're putting your faith and trust and so i just came up with all the things that we had studied in the first six chapters of mark which is what did jesus do after that he showed that he has the power of disease any kind of body issue ailment he had the power over over the s- demons over evil spirits oh he raised a dead girl we i mean and so when you see all that he has this power it gives us comfort and hope knowing that you know what god can use this uh, you know i mentioned john nine the 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 Man guy born, born blind from birth and yeah and they didn't necessarily uh, assess blame but he's like look my power is sufficient for this and so when you look at the cross and the resurrection in that light all of a sudden you're like okay th- this may be difficulty but difficult but it is it, it in all of us there's got to be a this desperation that we need something bigger and it, it leads us to, Jesus leads us to God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. So that's kind of the way I did it. And then I ended it with actually Colossians three seventeen, which, because I said, you know who were the unsung heroes of this whole weekend were the 78 volunteers. And I, I mean, I challenged the families. I said, think about, we didn't pay these people. They didn't, uh, they weren't in the limelight. They gave up their weekend for y'all. I said, so what you saw was you saw people who had put their faith and trust in Jesus. You saw that at work. And I read Colossians 3 because it said, whatever you do in word or deed, do it as working for the Lord, not for men. And I said, at some point, instead of saying, why did this happen? I said, you, you've got a volunteer for being a part of this. I said, even with your kid, with this condition, I, and I told about Missy and I when we did that. First few months, we were blaming each other and blaming God and saying, why is this happening? And I think Missy was the first one to say, well, why not us? We've got a volunteer for this. We're, we're going to let, you know, we're going to attack this and let God's power turn it into something good. Look, I saw it my own daughter at some point what the biggest thing that helped her when she became a teenager and struggling from a spiritual and emotional way is when she decided to help other people and it got the focus off her and and she started saying I- i'm volunteering for this and so i really made it all about volunteering and then i 
shared Jesus and what he did again. And I said, you know what's special about the followers of Jesus? I said, this is a volunteer army. And I said, if you can imagine in your mind that the last 2,000 years, all the people in all the world hearing about Jesus and raising their hand saying, I'm in. I'm in. I said, that's why this is the most powerful movement the world has ever known. Because we have the greatest Savior. We have the great, more than a prophet, the greatest person to ever visit the planet. He solves all the problems. You can start over. You can be resurrected. He introduced a forever family. I said, and then you just have people who volunteer to surrender to that. I said, it's the most powerful group of people in the history of the world. I said, and you saw some of that, you participated in that by being at the feet of those 78 volunteers. I think it was a real, it was a real moving moment. Of course, all the families were then volunteering, you know, in response, like, well, whatever we need to do moving forward to help other people. I was surprised that that was kind of the response. Yep. You just about stole my sermon, Jace. Well, I use it. I, I got it from huh. the... I was Holy thinking, Spirit Dad, you need to be word. taking some notes and add some. That's some pretty yeah. good stuff to add into your. Well, Colossians. I had four pages. I hate to add another one. Cause yeah, I no, time, leave but... it there, Dad. We we don't want to be there all morning. No, I, I think it was excellent, Jace. In fact, I want to us to react to it uh, in in the overtime segment because we're out of time on the podcast, and I'm very interested to hear Missy's. I hope you remember Missy's uh, addition to what you said because I'm curious now after you laid that out there what she said in response so by the way al what is the time frame how much time does a man have in the when he's speaking to the church they say usually 25 minutes but they'll probably give you 35 so i'd go the 25 to 30 i can say what i want to say in 20 i actually did that in 10 to 15 minutes huh yeah, less is yeah. more. I think 35 should be your max is what I'd say. So. 20 minutes and I'm out of there. As our you know old what? brother Carl Allison said, if you speak longer than 30 minutes, you should have just stayed home and written a book. <laughs> or if you hadn't struck oil by the time after 20 minutes, quit drilling. Quit boring. <laughs> quit boring. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, quit right. boring. Quit <laughs> boring. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if you want to follow us over to Overtime, uh, it's blazetv.com slash unashamed. We'll talk a little bit more about the Chase's big weekend. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.